Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. This episode is a follow-up segment to our previous episode from March around the pending carbon tax increase scheduled for April 1st. Now, we sat down with Mayor Gerald Albers of Lloydminster at the 2024 SUMA Convention in Regina, Saskatchewan, to get his reaction on the increase and what it means for residents and municipalities like his. In our last conversation, Mayor Albers urged Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government to halt any further escalation of the carbon tax. This increase elevated the price of carbon from $65 to $80 per tonne, with subsequent yearly increments until 2030, culminating in a $170 per tonne levy. Now, Mayor Albers articulated the critical need for municipalities to have sufficient time to address the impact of such increase on local service provisions as municipalities are on the front lines of service delivery. The ramifications of escalating the carbon tax extend well beyond environmental concerns, directly affecting essential services that communities rely on daily. Today, we revisit this vital issue with Mayor Albers to gain further insights. Now, as a reminder for our global audience, the carbon tax in Canada was initially introduced by the Liberal government at $20 per tonne in 2019 and has incrementally risen since then. While Alberta and Saskatchewan, including Lloydminster, are among the provinces and territories subject to this tax, Provinces such as British Columbia, Quebec, and the Northwest Territories have implemented their own carbon pricing mechanisms. Now, in light of this development, we delve deeper into how this April 1st increase has impacted municipalities, drawing on invaluable perspectives from Mayor Albers. So stay tuned as we continue our exploration of this ongoing issue. This is Municipal Affairs. Mayor Elbers, thank you so much for doing this. Um, so we chatted prior to April 1st, prior to the carbon tax uh, increasing. You made a call to the Prime Minister to hopefully have that carbon tax uh, pause for a few months or a year. Uh, it didn't. Your reaction? Well, thanks, Christopher. Just let me join you. It's, it's frustration. Uh, we're hearing it each and every day right now, just outside the city limits of Lloydminster. We have people that are expressing their frustration. They've been there now going on two weeks. Uh, axe the tax. They've, they went that, to that extreme. Our letter asked the Prime Minister to just hold the tax that they have. And also we'd like to see some support to the municipalities that was promised way back when, when carbon tax rolled out. And we're still waiting patiently or impatiently, I guess, and uh, the folks that are out there protesting are trying to send a message and saying, if we don't speak up, we've got problems. So what problems are we having right now from a municipal standpoint? Let's start there yeah. and then we'll go to the residential standpoint. So from, a, from a municipal standpoint, what issues are you going to see over the next year because well, of this increase? We're going to continue to see an increase in everything that this municipality delivers to our taxpayers and guests that use our facilities from roads. So the fuel that our trucks are burning are paying more in carbon tax. Our cost of asphalt's going up. Our cost of gravel because it's got to be brought into the city. Snow removal when it's snow season, that's going to continue to go up. We just see continuous increases coming from suppliers as well as all the, the, the energy that the city uses. We <coughs> pump water up from the North Saskatchewan River in our case and pump it 30 miles to the city. We've got to get it up out of the, the river valley and those pumps are electric and they take a lot of energy to lift that water up and to move it. So it's going to reflect on our utility bills again next year when we are asked to, to provide, the, to pay the bills because we don't have that opportunity to go into debt and that's a good reason for that for municipalities. We do borrow money for long-term capital projects but we can't run a deficit budget. So if the administration comes forward and says we need another 5% on our utility bills to cover the electrical, uh, water at the wastewater treatment plant, water treatment plant, the river, and our garbage contractor says, hey, we can't keep picking up garbage because we're losing money because of carbon tax. It's, it's challenging. So it, everything we do in the municipality, we're affected by carbon tax. Uh, that that's just and our parts our supplies it's just crazy when I when I talk to administration they say yeah we've seen another price increase from our suppliers and they're attributing it to carbon tax okay so you are the border city <laughs> of Canada 
the one side of your border has said we're not going to collect uh, the carbon tax in crown corporations uh, that's saskatchewan in alberta it's still uh, part part of any utility bill are you seeing it negatively affect both sides of the pro- uh, border because one side isn't and one side isn't or is Saska- is lloydminster regulated under saskatchewan <laughs> energy explain to me because after you left Three people messaged me and said, how can a border city be uh, having two issues or the same issue on both sides when two provinces are doing different things? You're absolutely right. And I've heard from some of our taxpayers. (laughs) So here's the interesting piece. Uh, Going back into some history, Atco Gas basically serves the entire city of Lloydminster. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter which side you're on, you get Atco Gas. Atco Gas is a private company. And as Premier Smith has indicated, she was not prepared to compromise that private company uh, in Alberta. So that affects the Lloydminster residents uh, on the Saskatchewan side who get their natural gas from ADCO. That even though the government of Saskatchewan is saying their crown corporation, Sask Energy, is not charging the carbon tax, the folks in Lloydminster are getting hit with the carbon tax on both sides of the city because of our current supplier, and that's the arrangement that's been there for many, many years. It's challenging. Uh, people are frustrated on both sides of the border, I can tell you that, but certainly I get it from Saskatchewan residents saying, well, my cousins live t- 10 miles out of the city and uh, they're not paying carbon tax and I've got to pay carbon tax, so can't you fix that? And I'm afraid that's another one of those municipal issues that are not a municipal issue, but I hear about it each and every day and I appreciate it. I share it with the province and, uh, you know, the MLA in Saskatchewan, her, call, her phone rings quite regularly when we have these challenges. I can imagine uh, MLA Young is probably... <laughs> heard this numerous times over and over again. Um, I want to turn to the residential standpoint perspective because you hear from the people that you uh, represent as mayor. Um, This this increase has now been in place for about 15 days as of recording this. Are people people struggling even worse now than 15 days ago when we last chatted? They are. And the fear, the, the greater fear is if this doesn't stop, what happens when we reach $180 a ton for carbon tax? That's, I think that's the greater fear. People are having a hard time, and I hear it from people. We're having a hard time buying groceries, paying our mortgage. Our wages haven't gone up. The, the inflation factor, and that's what we can talk about, is touching everyone everywhere. And it's just simply a, a challenge. And we attribute it back to carbon tax in most cases because everything that touches our city, from agricultural producers to oil and gas to commercial, It comes down 16 Highway, uh, Highway 16, the Yellowhead route. We ship goods out each and every day, and we bring goods in each and every day, and that all has a carbon footprint with it, but it also carbon tax, and uh, it's challenging. Our our ag producers are facing it, and to correct some people, there is no rebates going back to agricultural producers. They've they've been fighting just to try and get grain drying costs exempted, and I don't know if they won that one in Ottawa. So it's it's hugely challenging when we are um, a commodity based and we need energy to produce the food that we produce. It doesn't matter if it's the rancher that's hauling his cattle to the market or out to pasture, fixing his fence and putting in new fence posts, his tractor's burning uh, diesel fuel. We've got grain producers and the oil and gas industry, which keeps us running, even including the lubricants. And I want to remind people, as well as the asphalt you drive on, uh, you may say, well, you know, we need to go to electric cars. I have no problem with that, but remember it. You need asphalt because you don't do really well on gravel roads. You as a municipality play a, day to, uh, play a role in the day-to-day lives of people's pocketbooks. You talk about the service levels, you talk about the utilities. This increase has happened. Mm-hmm. What can the municipality do now to alleviate some of the pressures that people are in? Because you are still a growing community. You are still working through your community, but people are struggling in your community. And is this, does this mean that you're going to have to look at service levels? Does this mean that you're going to have to look at potentially scaling back some of the projects that you have on the agenda? Well, this has been an ongoing in eight years. We've went back to administration each and every budget and said, have you looked under all the nooks and crannies? 
and I have to say hats off to our administration. In many cases, they've they've tried to, to shave and trim and ensure that we're getting the, the best value we can for our taxpayers because of other factors. We've had tax increases. Mm -hmm. We've had a number of tax increases, some larger than others, some smaller than others, which is great to see. But inflation continues to be there for the last eight years. So it's a challenge because I've asked ratepayers and taxpayers from the perspective, what services do you want cut? And we do surveys annually at budget time and ask for their input. And no one, by far, and by well, 65% was the lowest, right up to 80%. They wanted the services maintained or increased. And that's the challenging part. Yet I, I visit with a lot of people from breakfast to coffee to different organizations. And the first comment is, so you're cutting taxes this year. And, and uh, I, I'm almost to the point I'm going to say, hey, maybe we're just going to be tax-free. And they're going to go, what, tax-free? And I'm going to say, yeah, we're just going to shut her down for a year, and then we'll come back in a year and see what you want. <laughs> and that, that'd be, a, that'd be a extreme, of course, that being an election year, that, that might not fly in a campaign motion but uh, idea. But the bottom line is that we are trying to provide the best service we can with the dollars we collect. And I know that, that, that people argue, well, I don't need this service and I don't have that service. But what makes your community? And it always comes back to what makes that community desirable to live in, to do business, to come and visit, to shop, and things like that. And I truly believe house prices are tied to the quality of life in our community and the value our community brings. And if we start cutting services, I can tell you your value of your property will go down because there won't be a demand for that property uh, from that perspective. And it gets, we, we either go forward or we go backwards. And we're trying to go forwards. Uh, if we're not moving forwards, you are going backwards. And that's, that's the tough one. Most municipalities, everyone I talk to here, big or small, we're all facing the same challenges. How do we do more? with less and the demands keep growing and if it's not the ratepayers or taxpayers it's the provincial and federal governments with new regulations from dealing with asbestos in old houses that are abandoned how we do we deal with that uh, time it gets done the lot isn't even worth the value of the cost to clean up the old house but there's there's huge challenges that's just one of many Mayor Albers, thank you so much as always. Thanks, Chris. It's a real pleasure. And uh, thanks for your show and thanks for uh, reaching out to municipal leaders across Canada. I think that uh, it gives us an opportunity to share our thoughts and views. And I think it's great that you're uh, doing this and really appreciate your show. We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA AGM in Regina. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. So if this episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews and our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.